Hello everybody, Smith here. Welcome back to some more Fighter Subscriber, where I have challenged my subscribers to do battle with me in the skies above the KSC. Uh, today's where things get interesting, because at the end of today's episode, we will know the name of the first craft to have made it through to this season's finals, barring any tiebreak, of course. Um, but before all that, let's go meet the craft that will be running the gauntlet today. So this is the Backburner V2 by Hilda, a craft I had to make some slight adjustments to to get it to fit with the rules. Also a craft that is here courtesy of a victory in a grueling five round tie break against the, uh, the J69 Block 420. Nice. By Power. It's a bit of a chunky looking boy courtesy of those two engine nacelles slung under the delta wing. Uh, it's powered by two Saturn engines and is armed with four AMRAMs, eight sidewinders and a trio of Vulcan cannons. The test flight was interesting. I mean, the craft is manoeuvrable enough, but uh, it does lose a lot of energy in the turns and goes super manoeuvrable a little more easily than I think is ideal. I mean, it's stable when it does so, but it could make it a bit of a sitting duck. We'll have to see. So the Backburners begin their attempt to make this season's finals with a fight against my Redhawks. Let's, uh, let's get them into the air. The competition starts, and with the leaderboard as it is, it is going to require three solid wins to uh, to make it into a finals position. Not necessarily perfect wins. Uh, Sixteen points is the requirement, but yeah, three um, two wins is no longer enough. Yosemite Kerman breaking low as the traditional game of missile tennis commences. That is a lot of missiles going backwards and forwards. What's this set up for? Two, uh, two missiles per target, two max missile targets, okay. So uh, they should have burnt through their AMRAMs and we'll be trying to close the distance before they switch to Sidewinders. The Red Hawks, in the meantime, will be trying to launch a second volley of AMRAMs. Yosemite Kerman breaking off to dodge. Um, still a fair distance away. None of these craft, like, super fast. I mean, fast enough, but <laughs> there we go. Now the, uh, now the uh, Backburner gets some Sidewinders away. Let's switch to the old dogfight cam. Again, before someone in the comments shouts at me, one of the Red Hawks. One of the Red Hawks has taken a heavy hit. The dogfight camera doesn't know what the hell it's doing. <laughs> one of the backburners has gone. One of the backburners. We just saw that out the corner of the screen. Oh, this dogfight cam sometimes. Oh my god. 2v2. 2v2. So that is a point off the maximum the backburners can achieve, but that still might be enough. Gunfire going in over there, the dogfight camera. Loving these switches away just in time for us to miss that, but that was glorious. That was glorious. It is two against one. The backburners have the advantage, and oh my god. The Red Hawk is just split into pieces in midair. And it is a victory for the backburners. One down, two to go, though with the, uh, the loss of that craft in the first fight, the margin for error is shrinking, and yeah, now the backburner goes up against my spike tails. By far the best performing of my craft in this season, so gonna be interesting, let's get this started. The competition starts, Ion Kerman hard around, I'll switch to dogfight cam immediately so I don't forget later. Two AMRAMs away, three and four again, just a a snowstorm of missiles headed towards the spike tails, but the spike tails have responded. Like the um, like the Red Hawks, they should get their own AMRAMs away in two volleys. Oh my god, one of the spike tails has gone. That does not normally happen. Another one of the spike tails has gone to missiles. That really does not normally happen. This is looking like a stroke of some extraordinary luck for the backburners. Ion Kerman comes around. Uh, is he within range? Yet yeah, the other, uh, his wingmen are getting the missiles away. Now Ion Kerman does likewise. It is just going to be a hail of missiles coming for Adam Kerman. Though Adam Kerman, oh my god, I was about to say, <laughs> might manage to dodge them. Maybe not. So I was a little bit worried for the backburners at the start of this fight, but a brutally efficient, if maybe a little lucky, a victory there. Hmm. Let's, uh, let's move on to the final fight. So potentially one win away from securing a place in the uh, finals positions, at least for the time being, and the backburners have a really good chance because they now go up against my lynxes, which have just been awful this season. Let's, um... Let's see if they can make an improvement here. 
here we go then. So a perfect victory will uh, see them into a finals place. Uh, if they lose a craft in doing so, that gives me the headache of a tie break. Should um, should nothing really change with the other four, the top four craft in the remaining uh, remainder of the gauntlet round. And if they lose two craft in the process, then I'm afraid it's all over for them. I mean, this isn't bad. They did get a lot of luck last time, but this isn't bad for a craft who only just made it into uh, into the twelve of this round, sort of at the last minute, just by the skin of its teeth. In a, uh, in a, as I said, a gruelling five-round tie-break with the uh, with the J69. Um, this is, as a result, this is the worst performing craft um, in terms of preliminaries results uh, left in the competition. So, but it's doing really well. I mean, one of the links has gone already. Fell to uh, fell to a missile strike. Uh, oh, that is one of the back burners gone. That is one of the back burners. Yeah, I think that's not... I don't think that's going to recover from this. Is it? Oh, another one of the links is gone. Oh! It's getting very, very interesting. Can the links manage one final kill? Or will the backburners just hold on? I think the backburners are faster than the links. Is that one just managing to uh, get a little bit of... A little bit more distance? I think if that cannon does have some sidewinders left. Pop one... Oh, no, that was a joust. Like that come having to face down some um, face down some gunfire, face down some more gunfire. Blown some sidewinders off. Now just has the two left. Did have an opportunity to use them earlier, but I think yeah, I think that moment has uh, has been and gone. I think yeah, it is curtains for Lake Lack Kerman, and that makes things very interesting as to whether or not the backburners have a chance of getting into the um getting into the finals positions. Well, let's go Let's go look at the scores. The Backburner V2 then, perhaps a little lucky in that middle fight, or maybe I'm being a little bit hard on it because, um, I mean, its performance was pretty solid in those other fights, but uh, anyway, if we bring up the leaderboard, we can see that with nine kills and seven survivors, the Backburner currently sits on 16 points, putting it joint third with the, uh, the Gripen or something, I don't know, and the LF-71A Kara Kara or Karakara, I don't know. As I mentioned in a previous video, uh, I am only doing tie breaks this season if it's absolutely necessary, and with three very good craft yet to come this round, it could be that the whole craft being tied on 16 points thing is rendered academic anyway. One thing we do now know for certain, though, is the name of one of our finalists, and that is the SMFL 10F Switchblade by Big Boy, so uh, congratulations to him. We'll have to see what other craft will, uh, will fill those slots over the next three episodes. A massive thank you to Hilda for this craft. Uh, if you want me to fight your craft, I'm afraid submissions for this season are now closed, although I am still doing my regular mailbag streams if you want to see your craft featured on this channel. So, um, yeah, send them in for that. Uh, but that will be all for today. I do hope you've enjoyed it. If you have and you haven't already, then please consider liking, subscribing, commenting, uh, maybe following me on Twitter, possibly getting involved with the Discord, uh, Great KSP and BD Armoury community on there and more besides. All those links in the description, as are links to the PayPal and the Patreon. If you want to help support the channel, you too can get your own little Patreon Kerbal, your name at the end of videos, access to the Patreon only Discord, some other stuff I'm trying. That kind of thing. I will be back soon with some more Fighter Subscriber, but until then, thanks for watching, take care, and I'll see you next time.